Hi everyone, it's Frankie Lou and Angus. We're here again today to discuss with you one of our favorite crops, both to eat and grow. Potatoes. Potatoes. We really, really love potatoes uh, for various obvious reasons. We do love to eat them. Um, actually, it's one of the few crops that Angus will actually eat. Angus um, lives by osmosis, I always likes to say. <gasps> <laughs> but uh, he will eat potatoes. And I did grow up on a potato farm out in Delta, BC. So I like potatoes and could eat them every day. I'm also a celiac. It's a great option if you're a celiac to get your carbs and stuff. Clearly, I enjoy my carbs. And um, one of the best things, though, is if you're a novice gardener or a child wanting to get started, potatoes are super fun. Super easy, and I grew one in my bedroom. <laughs> he grew one in his bedroom, and that wasn't an accident. Um, so, so yes, love potatoes. Great starter crop for people who haven't done it before or for children, as I say, because there's nothing kind of more exciting for a kid for that very first time, pulling that plant out, shoveling it out, and getting a whole meal worth of potatoes from one plant. Okay, so... Um, Number one thing you can do, once again, did grow up on a potato farm in Delta, BC, but this isn't Delta, BC. Um, you can't drop a seed in the ground, it'll just grow. We have a very short growing season. So we have a few tips and tricks for getting that uh, growing season, the potatoes grow in time. And, um, but you can also use this in Delta if you wanna get two crops, cause some of you people probably could. All right, number one thing we do is called chitting. Okay, I you know it's a funny word, but it's really quite a cool thing. How many of you have reached into your back of your cupboard and found a lost potato that's got spindly things, light gnarly things coming off of that? Those are potato sprouts that are growing. We don't want to do that. We want to get these nice, juicy, green, beautiful sprouts. And why is that, I guess? So... When it's growing in like in the back of the cupboard, there's probably not much light. And if you grow potatoes with very little light, it will grow light because there's no chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. Plants are green because of the chlorophyll and they produce that from the sun. So. Yeah, that's right. And will it be as strong without the sun? Nope. Will it be as nutritious without the sun? Nope. Okay, so we want to get these potatoes started. If you get the sprouts started growing now, it does two things. You mean It means that you can start it inside in the kitchen here or in your bathroom, wherever you get some good light. And that part of getting started, getting those sprouts going, has started and doesn't have to happen underground. The other thing that's good is it actually will hold it in stasis. You can have a potato that's ready to plant for 16 weeks, okay, like a long time. So if you've got some nice seed potatoes and you bought them really early and it's not ready, you can get them going. Or if you have some nice organic potatoes, never try to sprout uh, standard potatoes. They've usually been sprayed and won't grow properly. Um, so, but I have cheated and used organic ones from the store, from the farmer's market before. If there's a potato I really like, I sometimes will save one and sprout it. So, um, chitty, cardboard egg cartons, your best tool for this. They cradle your potatoes so they're not rolling all over the place if you have naughty cats and dogs like we do. And um, it also is a nice surface to allow them to dry. Okay, what we mean by that is, you can also uh, make your potatoes, seed potatoes go further by chitting because you can see that I've got a nice good size one here. This one has got multiple sprouts on it. So I'm gonna cut it in half. And I'm gonna put it in two different compartments now. You wanna make sure that you do this long before you plan to put it in the ground. Never put a wet potato in the ground, okay? Potatoes need to be dry and scabbed over if you do cut them, like this one. This was done several days ago. And then they will, there's less chance of disease. It goes with um, potatoes in general. When I put my potatoes in the ground, I actually don't water them until the sprouts come right to the surface. 
if you do this chitting process, so that happens super fast. Like I'm always shocked at how soon my potatoes start to grow. Other tips we have for here. Do we grow russet potatoes? What? Do we grow russet potatoes? What are those? Those are those big ones. No, we grow, we grow short season determinant styles like Yukon Gold, Norland, all these ones. They make the best new potatoes. And honestly, with our short growing seasons, when we try to grow things like russet, often the ground freezes, wrecks the potatoes, get a hard freeze before we get to eat them. We're talking about growing potatoes in our garden outside, but some of you might be watching this from an apartment building or, but that doesn't mean you can't grow potatoes. Yeah, because I grew one in my bedroom and if the cat, and if our visitor from last video hadn't um, used it as a litter box, we would have um, been able to have french fries. Yeah, it was growing really, really well. Angus used this particular container. We filled it about halfway up with dirt, he put a couple of chitted potatoes in there, filled it up with dirt, clipped on a grow light, and he had a gorgeous plant going. But every time we went into his room, I was like, what's that smell? And it got worse and worse and worse. And then we discovered the cat thought it was a really great litter box. It was very unfortunate because it was doing really well. You could do that. You could grow them in a pot about this size. This is about as small as Five you want to go. Gallons. Yeah. You can get those nice grow bags that you can purchase at a lot of different gardening stores. If you don't care what it looks like, you, you can just, use a soil bag. Just use a soil bag. Just slide open the top, pop some potatoes in there. You got yourself a perfect grow bag. You want to make sure it has a lot of nutrition. Once again, love this product. It's been great. It's organic and it does have uh, some organic fertilizers in there. Um, but if you do have uh, room in a garden to grow grow potatoes, I suggest a raised bed. We always, especially in short growing seasons, we we always suggest we have a cat actually scratching the back of that chair right now. Um, don't let uh, the computer fall. You don't want to knock the computer down. Yeah, I'm just going to uh, get her. I'm going to go get her. Okay. Um, watch it. Okay. There we go. She's evil. Um, what what uh, what we do is we have we will often we will often um, grow in raised beds. Raised beds are great because they're good for intensive planting. They're because the soil doesn't get compressed and you can work from all sides. The other reason a raised bed is great is because uh, you can you can plant far more intensively. If you were to plant potatoes in the ground, you'd have to worry about rows places to walk in between them and you also um, would not be able to plant this intensively. Maybe they should be about a foot apart from each other and you could maybe get away with doing nine on a four, four by four plot in the ground and that's unlikely. You'd probably get away with even less because you need to, to be able to get between. But in a grow box, how many can we have there? Like at least five more. Yeah, well, 13, so four more, because you can get them in between there. There's still almost a foot in between each of these, okay? The soil heats up a lot faster when it's a raised bed, and um, with a place like Calgary, where the, where the soil is really, really clayey, raised beds are really great as well. I also find that the raised beds assist us in fighting our pests that we have here. Okay, go. Pocket gophers, probably the worst pest in any garden I've ever seen. We're not talking those cute little prairie gophers that live in colonies and are nice light brown and chirp at each other. No, we're talking about something that looks a lot like a rabid rat on steroids. And um, it lives underground and it tunnels up and it eats little bits and pieces out of your crop. These horrible big mounds, they're just a nightmare. Um, and so we do lots of things with the raised beds. We put screen under it to help with that. Another thing that I do is I interplant with onions. onions. It helps a little bit. Um, we don't believe in using any pesticide, right? Yep. Nope. So we believe in something called companion planting and we'll talk more about that later when we're putting stuff in the ground. But this is uh, one of our best companion plants that we have found for planting with our potatoes. We plant them in between. Like, boink, 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 boink. 
um, and you get your, your onions in there. It helps protect the potatoes from a lot of the pests that go after them. Um, your onions aren't going to be as big and as great as they would be if they're planted on their own, not outside of the potatoes because they need a lot of sun and potatoes are big bushy plants. But this bag of a hundred potatoes, whoops, sorry, onion sets, cost me like three bucks. Yeah. So it's a no brainer. I'm not going to be having to spray pesticide on it. It's going to help. I also plant nasturtiums and marigolds often with my potatoes and lettuce around the border to make it look attractive. Um, other things that we do, um, you want to make sure that your soil is really well amended, but I wouldn't suggest using just straight manure. Then you end up with a scabby potato. Angus insists that that wouldn't bother him, but I know better. Um, it doesn't, scab doesn't affect sort of the quality of the inside of the potato, yeah. but it does leave some pretty gnarly looking things on the outside. That you still can. a potato. Still a potato. Still tastes better than anything you're buying in the grocery store. Okay. Um, we've had some other experiments with our potatoes when we were living in the city. One time we put plastic down over our bed, poked holes. You did? Yeah, you were too young to remember that. And the potatoes grew up like this, the black plastic heated the soil up and the potatoes grew up through there. It was a bit too fussy for me, but boy, I did get a really great potato crop that year. So, um, and also, um, when I was doing like this gardening competition, mm -hmm. um, uh, we, uh, had this, um, uh, so I had a potato about this big and one of the potatoes that I got from it, was this big. We were able Bigger to, than a watermelon. Yeah, we, it was huge. And it wasn't hollow in the middle. It was wonderful. We were able to use it for uh, lots of fries that night, the family. Yeah. Okay. We fed our family of five. So um, we love new potatoes. We like to get them when they're really nice and young. I usually end up eating all our potatoes before we even get to the, don't worry about it, before we even get to full size. Um, but do wait until your potatoes have got flowers and have had flowers for a little bit before you start trying to dig through there and get the, get the little guys out of there. So quick recap, chitting, that's doing this, making sprouts, well amended soil, raised beds are great, companion planting. You're going to hear us talk a lot about companion planting in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, if there's one crop you're happy to let your kids have a go at, it's kind of hard to mess up. Don't water them until they come to the surface. Don't overwater. Once they do come to the surface, you want to keep it fairly consistently watered, but don't overwater them. Um, cause you don't want that soil to get nice and compacted and too wet. Mulching, good for that as well. And I really suggest if you're not going to grow anything else and you're just kind of nervous and oh, this is a really good first crop, both for kids and adults, because I seriously don't know anyone who doesn't like potatoes, right? Very rewarding. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. I hope we inspire you to grow some potatoes. Potatoes are awesome. They are. And they actually are a really beautiful plant. Um, so give it a go. And don't... If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And we'll get back to you. Yep, next have, video. Have a great day.